Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. Thank you to those that are coming back and to the new people that have stumbled upon this. Congratulations, you have found this video despite the YouTube algorithm. Glad you're here. And what we do on this channel is we review uh, auction listings for specifically Land Cruisers, uh, 80 series, 100 series, 200 series Land Cruisers. And we go through them and try and like find what's wrong with them, see if they're a good buy, try and predict the final sales price. And yeah, that's what we do. So have a great one. Actually, I <laughs> I haven't even looked at this one yet, so this is going to be a little bit of, uh, yeah, off the cuff. So, yeah, let's jump into it. What we have today is a modified 2000 Land Cruiser. It looks like it's heavily modified. It's got uh, a whole bunch of the off-roading or overlanding stuff, some big tires, uh, front bumper, looks like rear bumper too, uh, aftermarket rack, it's got way too much weight up high. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so yeah, looking just at the uh, the photos in this front presentation, I see like a little dent in that fender. Um, this paint, you know, like the chrome on here isn't isn't standard. So yeah, we'll pay attention to that. It looks like some weird corrosion stuff going on around this driver's side window. Looks like it's discolored a little bit. But we'll get into the photos and yeah, go through that. But let's hit the overview first. So yeah, this is located in Prescott Valley, Arizona. Uh, it's got yeah, a lot of miles, uh, 243,000 miles. Uh, everything else looks yeah, pretty standard besides all of the uh, aftermarket kind of off-roading centric stuff. Um, let's see. The seller acquired the truck in January of 2022. Ooh, probably not going to be making money on this. <laughs> and it sits at at approximately 6,000 of the indicated uh, 243,000 miles. Yeah, I wonder why they bought it. Maybe off-roading wasn't their thing. But clean title. Uh, in the seller's name, and it's got some yeah, some service records along with it. The listing describes imperfections to include a ding on the front left quarter panel. Maybe that's what we saw on the left fender. Uh, peeling finish on the left rear door trim. I thought that was on the front, but maybe there's something else. And corrosion near the top right corner of the windshield. Ugh. Uh, the Carfax report like, lists minor damage to the left side in May of 2007. Yeah, maybe that's what that damage is, and the windshield was replaced just recently uh, in September of 2022. Uh, it's got, yeah, those aren't the wheels that would have come with it. Uh, you know, normally for this age, it would have been like the, you know, the five spoke stuff, but those are Toyota wheels. Uh, they're from a later, what, either Tundra or even Land Cruiser, I think. Uh, it's got a matching spare, which is good. Haven't seen a picture of that yet, but that's good that it's matching. And it's got an old man emo suspension for a three inch increase in ride height. So that's quite a bit. Um, with that amount of uh, height, we should be seeing some other uh, necessary suspension modifications, uh, including like a diff drop, maybe even a pan hard bracket. Yeah, lots of other stuff likely needs to be done to accommodate that. We should see, you know, it says front stabilizer arms. We should be seeing likely um, aftermarket upper control arms. We should be seeing, um, you know, sway bar link extensions. So, yeah, we'll see. And, yep, everything else just on the interior and these other photos look, yeah, pretty normal. We'll go through the photos here in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Is there a Carfax here? Don't want to cheat too much on these photos. Let's take a look at the Carfax. Yep, so the minor damage. Uh, looks like it's had four owners per the Carfax. Um, Arizona, let's see, where were the first two owners? Uh, looks like California. And yeah, as we go through this, just going to keep an eye on the mileage, um, see if anything jumps out at us. It looks like it was in Utah for a little bit. Yep, so California, Utah. Yeah, so a lot of this usage was actually in Utah, it looks like. So from 63, 66, excuse me, 66,000 miles in 2003, all the way through, uh, let's see, and then it went to Idaho. So 2003, 66,000 miles back in Utah, um, yeah, northern Utah in 2015, 16, 17. Yeah, so this thing spent most of its life in Utah, um, but good looks like good service history, at least uh, through mechanics that report their service um, to Carfax. So from 2003 to 2019, uh, this thing was in Utah. So that's, yeah, quite a bit. So I'm going to, quite a bit of uh, yeah history in 
uh, yeah, in Utah and places where it can rest. Uh, I'm going to scroll back up to this damage. So it says, yeah, minor damage could have been an accident, could have been something else, but um, yeah, minor and then all along the left side. So yeah, likely including um, the left front fender, left door, uh, left driver door, left passenger door in the rear quarter. So we'll keep an eye on that side of the body, see if there's anything that jumps out at us um, to get a gauge for how well or how poorly the repair was done. Okay. All right. So let's get into the photos. Oh, great. There's videos too. So we'll, we'll take a look at those. Okay, so I just took a second and went through all the videos, uh, pretty extensive videos. There's uh, you know, four or five, six of them. Um, the only like real noticeable thing I saw in the videos, you know, went through like a cold start, which was actually a cold start. So that's a nice touch. Um, but yeah, I went through some of the electronic functions like the seats and the only like really noticeable thing that I saw was the, uh, the passenger rear window was, yeah, it was pretty slow that can be solved with like a little bit of, uh, like lubrication, cleaning the tracks, uh, but something to be aware of, um, it would also be very common for uh, the the door lock actuators to not work, um, you know, either from um, you know hitting the buttons like on the door or from the keyless entry. It appears that the driver one is functional, so yeah, that's a that's a good sign as well. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the photos and see what we see. Uh, so yeah, keep in mind here on the left side, yeah, there was that body damage. I'm going to be looking for you know differences in paint color. Um, you know, any misalignment, it's disclosed, so that's good. You know, we've gone over a couple examples just recently where they didn't disclose body damage, uh, you know, and we had to find it. So, uh, yeah, at least this has that going for it. Um, I see right here this this gap in the rocker between, yeah, the rocker panel and these uh, aftermarket sliders. I do see like a little bit of a curve in the pinch weld. Uh, likely this sat on a rock or something at some point before those sliders got on there. Um, that could also be from the damage, you know, that occurred on this side, you know, and without any, without any indication of what that is, yeah, we were kind of left guessing. Um, so it could have been, you know, something severe and like maybe there was like an accident and, you know, there was damage to these doors that pushed that in. Um, so that might be worth asking for some follow-up photos on if we, you know, if we don't see any more detail there. I uh, see a little chipping here on the front fender, maybe a little bit of like rust there. It's very common for these aftermarket bumpers to, you know, to rub and to flex. Um, yeah, so we'll look for a detail photo there. Uh, I do note that the um, the rear view or the side mirror rather is a, is a different color. Maybe that didn't get impacted by, you know, an accident or maybe it's just faded. Uh, we'll see if there's color on the passenger sides any different. In, in addition to that, uh, those spot welds kind of, you know, the pinch weld being, um, you know, pushed up there, are some weird discontinuities through, here towards the rear um you know it doesn't look anyway there's, there's just something going on so we'll hope hope for a better picture there uh in the front it's kind of hard to tell what's going on that pinch weld kind of does disappear but it could just be going behind the slider we should see something you know to tell if there's a difference we can look at the photo from the opposite side and engage that so we'll kind of you know earmark that and keep that in mind yeah, nothing really jumping out at me. Uh, yeah, the wheels are pretty big. I didn't, or the tires are pretty big. I didn't, I don't remember what size they were, but yeah, they're either 33 or 35s or 34s. Yeah, they seem pretty big. Yep, that waviness is <laughs> definitely interesting. All right, here at the rear, uh, yeah, nothing really jump out at me. Um, yeah, it looks like a nice, pretty nice bumper and matching spare tire. That's great. Okay, moving to the front. Yeah, so we can see that some of those discontinuities that we saw in that rocker panel aren't here on this side. So definitely an area to, to pay attention to. And I feel like these trim moldings aren't all the same. It looks like there's some sort of like chrome on at least these front three uh, trim panels, but the, this rear quarter panel didn't have them. Let me look at the other side. And it looks like the driver's side rear door is like normal what you would expect you know for this age but then the yeah the three other pieces have the chrome so it looks like that chrome's kind of peeled away the chrome just to be clear is not something that was yeah factory standard let's let's check before we move on let's just check gaps and stuff on these on these doors on this uh, driver's side 
Mm, yeah, maybe a little tight uh, in between and at the top of um, of the the front door and the rear door. Uh, it seems like the gap kind of opens up a little bit on the bottom. Uh, the gap between the fender and the and the front door look okay, but you know we can compare that to you know the other side of the vehicle, and it looks like it does open up a little bit in between the front and the rear door, but not nearly as much as eh, it's about the same. All right, so maybe that's maybe that's nothing. Okay, but whatever's going on with that pinch weld, that's definitely definitely a thing, and it's not consistent on both sides of the vehicle. All right, moving to the front. Um, you know, this valence panel under, underneath looks pretty straight. Uh, maybe it's a you know the bumper sitting a little bit lower on the driver's side. That's you know these who, who knows what's going on there. Maybe the bumper's not you know like totally flat and level, uh, and just, yeah. And then seeing just a little corrosion on these uh, control arms. So we'll we'll take a peek at that when we get there. Uh, you know, checking this gap on the front uh, driver's side looks like it's a little tight at the bottom opens up towards the top maybe like a little dent here on the a pillar maybe a little like corrosion or something so maybe we can get a detail shot there but yeah I wonder I wonder how this gap looks like on the on the passenger side uh, you know going back to that frontal shot looks like looks like maybe maybe it's a little a little tighter on the driver's side again not a huge deal. You know that the accident's been there. It's just something to be aware of. And yeah, confirmation of, you know, whether it's hitting or whether it was, you know, like during, during driving or whether, um, you know, this, this, the chips are from, you know, like installation or something, but yeah, definitely get some, some paint on that. It's, <laughs> you know, there's, there's this like thought in my head of, you know, why people don't like fix stuff like this. Um, like what looks worse, like a poorly painted or mismatched like paint section, like through this area on the fender or yeah, like rusting out and getting worse. I, I just don't get why, why you wouldn't, you know, hop on, hop on top of that. But yeah. That, that dent in this front left fender yeah, is pretty significant. All right. Moving to this next photo. Um, the yeah the mirror is definitely looks like a different color um yeah not sure and then yeah let's get a look at what's going on with this rocker panel they've provided a nice detail shot um looks like part of the issue is that the sliders have been repainted and either poor masking or no masking um has allowed black paint to get on the you know lighter colored uh pinch weld area so maybe that's maybe that's nothing, and that could be the reason why we saw that waviness. And yeah, that that seems to be what's going on uh, as we move to the back here, because that um, that pinch weld looks yeah looks pretty good all the way back, and that could be what that discoloration or why it looked like it was either missing or bent in. So that's that's good to resolve that by the detail photo. Yep, moving through the rest of these. Nothing jumping out at me. Yeah, very, very typical, you know, scratches and dents, touch up paint, whatever. Uh, what is concerning is a little bit of, you know, rust color here. You know, I mentioned in the other video, this is a good spot to, to check for rust. It's a good telltale, just like that, you know, tailgate handle. Uh, so yeah, a detailed photo of this would, would certainly be appropriate. Looks looks okay. Okay, and then here on the front uh, passenger side, the the attachment you know for this valence panel looks like there's some corrosion under there. So it looks like this is going to have a little bit of a corrosion story to tell, which is expected from yeah most of its life being in Utah. And then you can see that that rust there. Not a big deal. It's you know it's hidden, but um, you know another thing I see a little bit of rust here. Uh, where this headlight interacts with that valence panel.
yeah, if if you're the type of person, you know, maybe maybe this, you know, the corrosion situation is good for, um, you know, for people in the Rust Belt. You know, it really doesn't look that bad. But yeah, if you're looking for something that's rust free, yeah, this this is not this is not for you. Um, that amount of mileage and time in Utah certainly will indicate and will result in, you know, your maintenance activities being a pain in the butt because you're dealing with, you know, rusted and corroded fasteners. Uh, this, what you're seeing here through this, this bumper, kind of like this black, um, crusty stuff could be painted over corrosion. Maybe it's been treated appropriately. Not sure. That doesn't look great. It should be a relatively clean, you know, like radiator, you know, core support down there. So definitely worth another look. Um, yeah, similar corrosion on this other side. That's kind of weird. I wonder what, what the story is there on that little tab on the that filler panel. All right, looking here to the rear bumper. Another, <laughs> so that, you know, the powder coat on these bumpers, as good as these bumpers are, um, yeah, just, just be careful when you like order these aftermarket products, they will eventually rust out. <laughs> It might take years, probably not worth uh, worrying about, but yeah, always make sure you get like a powder coat finish that yeah, it can easily be touched up and cleaned up because yeah, you might need to. Uh, what you're seeing here underneath this filler panel behind the driver's side tail light, um, when, when the bumper on these 100 series Land Cruisers gets hit, there are... Um, you know, like the actual plastic itself. And sometimes it's not even because it got hit, but sometimes that plastic can rub against the, and then this is actually the body um, underneath this filler panel. Uh, let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. But, but it can create this kind of like surface rust thing. So normally that wouldn't be a concern, especially if you had the original bumper still in place because it's just going to continue to, you know, to work that metal over and over and it's never really going to get a chance to, to rust and to, and to sink in there. But by changing bumpers like this, that would have been a good opportunity to hit that with some, just some gray touch of paint. Doesn't even need to match, you know, the body because it's kind of tucked behind, but yeah, that's definitely something I would have done. And that was something that I had to do on my, on my hundred series line cruiser. Uh, cause I actually had, you know, a little bit of a, yeah, a bump that was evidenced, you know, by the prior owners that, that, that caused a dent and something else. Um, anyway, caused, caused a dent and that same type of rubbing. Yeah. It looks like some, you know, dents and stuff on the rear tailgate looks like, you know, got closed on something Yeah, not, not a big deal for somebody who's going to offer this thing. And then working through the rest of the photos of the rear, uh, yeah, swing out arms. See, see that corrosion in there. It just it's it's kind of sad because like these you know people pay good money for these bumpers, but then to have them you know like kind of get all rusty and stuff. I remember the, there was one Lang, one ninety nine Land Cruiser that I bought out of Wyoming, and it was like the same thing. It had you know like newish uh, silly bumpers and sliders and all that stuff. But yeah, there's. You know, at, at all the points where they couldn't get good powder coat in there, yeah, it was like rusting out and just doesn't look great. You can see a similar issue here on the passenger side underneath the, the bumper wing. Again, not probably not a big deal. It might not rust out in somebody's lifetime. Minor imperfections in the hood, as you would expect, consistent with the mileage, you know, with it being 250,000 miles, you wouldn't expect to see, you know, this, this type of, um, you know, these, these chips on something that had, you know, like, let's say, you know, 75,000 miles or less. And once, once the corrosion on like these sliders and the bumpers, like I'm talking about, once that starts, yeah, there's besides like, you know, grinding them out, yeah, there's, there's no way to. To fix that it's just going to happen so you can keep repainting them and they'll look good for you know i don't know a week or months but yeah it's a losing battle yeah so this is that driver side or the driver door frame not sure what's going on here i i don't understand why this why this happened um, maybe they repainted it as part of that body damage and whatever they did didn't stick I, I don't know. I've, I've never seen it like this bad or, or really any, anywhere close to this. That's interesting that that's going on, but yeah, why, you know, put some, you know, sand that down, put some paint on it. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't take very long.
Yeah, that doesn't look great. Yeah, a little, little crack in this trim piece. And they are very proud of their glass. Uh, how many windows would be in this thing? How many of these should we see? So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so that last count. Don't count the front. So one, two, three, four five, six, and then another four. So there should be 10. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. Why didn't they take pictures of the rest? Maybe they're, yeah, beats me. So there's, there's four that they don't have pictures of. Yeah, both mirrors are the same color, mm, but not the same color as the body. Um, sometimes that can happen because of the painted it's kind of weird. Sometimes the painted metal surfaces, they either oxidize or the paint changes on them uh, differently than like a plastic painted surface. Like a very common thing is like a, um, well, it happens on these, um, these little, you know, trim panels on the doors. But, you know, think of like any like mid nineties, uh, like Toyota Camry where the, you know, like the car is a different color than the bumpers. So showing off the rooftop tent here. Um, yeah, these like these don't really carry like that much value. Um, you know, depending on the brand, I don't I don't recognize this brand, um, but yeah, probably not more than like actual like four or five hundred dollars worth of value. Um, and then the aftermarket, you know, like the bumpers and stuff and the roof rack. I mean, they could have easily spent like six grand or more between just those things. But yeah, they really yeah really don't add uh, you know more than I don't know more than like a quarter of their value. So maybe, you know, an extra like thousand, two thousand bucks worth of value here because of all the aftermarket stuff. And we haven't even gotten into the suspension yet. All right, showing off the tires. Yeah, 285, 75 R18s. I don't, I don't know what that is in, uh, in inches, but yeah, they're probably like 34, 35 inch tires. Okay. I cheated. Yeah. They're, they're 35 inch tires. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving to the interior, yeah, a little discoloration here against the door sill for 240, you know, 3000 miles. It's very normal. The seats actually, this driver's seat looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, considering looks like person, you know, somebody has been sliding in and out and the bolsters, you know, worn, but it doesn't look like it's torn, which is great. Uh, I believe these, uh, uh, seat tracks are supposed to have covers up front. So those are missing again, not a big deal. Just something that's catching my attention. It looks like this door sill, uh, weather stripping has been torn from, yeah, that, that person getting in and out. It does look like there's some, you know, cracking. And so the leather is probably pretty stiff as you would expect. Uh, same thing, you know, missing trim pieces. Uh, this center console trim's not tucked up quite right. Uh, it's kind of some weird, like, you know, bulging in the carpet against the, like the trans tunnel. Not sure what to make of that. Let me go back here and look at, yeah. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking at these, um, yeah, these bolts. Remember, you know, we had the accident damage on the side. So I was curious if there were, you know, turn marks on those bolts. Yeah, my, my preference, you know, so these 100 series line cruisers, at least of, you know, this age that came with either the oak, uh, oak color trim or this kind of like, you know, blue, uh, you know, bluish gray trim. Yeah, I think I, I think I prefer this darker color and not the, not the beige. Seems pulling apart, a yeah, very, very common wear item on these seats. Steering wheel looks, looks pretty good. Makes, makes me curious if it's been... Yeah, replaced, but seeing like a little like oxidation and wear up at the top, yeah, it tells me that it that it hasn't. So that that's great. It's in good condition for the age. Not sure what this little switch or button does. Yeah, 
Yeah, nothing nothing jumping out at me through these pictures. It's got an aftermarket Pioneer stereo. Um, another like random switch on this blank panel that they've cut in. And then, yeah, it looks like it's missing the little cap and looks like a wire coming out where the, um, where the AHC controls are for like the Lexus and for the, um, yeah, for the automatic high controller. This one, this vehicle obviously didn't, didn't, doesn't have it, but, um, yeah, this, this panel either has been repainted or it's pretty hammered. Um, yeah, it's kind of got a weird like surface finish and then it looks like it's got seat heaters. Maybe because the car's off, this should be on, and maybe it is on, but it, yeah, it should be lighting up if the vehicle's on, but it might not, just might not be on. And then looks like it's got a compact disc player in the center console. I don't think, I don't think that's factory, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> little little bit of crud <laughs> here in the glove box. It's gross. Who knows what that is? Uh, this switch panel is not sitting down all the way. Not sure why it's discolored, or it looks like it's discolored there. Yeah, it should be sitting down. It's probably been removed once or twice. These, you know, they're they're kind of hard to get out. And if you if you take them out, see like a little bit of crack there too. If you take them out the wrong way, I think you know a lot of people they're tempted to pry up on this backside. When yeah, I think the actual process is to there's a little clip here at the front that you got to release, and then it and then it comes out uh, to the front. Yep, nothing out of the or that's. Yeah, it's kind of funny. The, the, the other Lion Cruiser 100 series that we looked at already had the same like thing popping out. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> it's like a trend. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, this passenger or driver side rear door, it's missing the lens on the courtesy light. But otherwise, it's as you would expect it. And I also noted that the light's not on. Um, yeah, the lights on on all the other doors, but not that not that pass or driver side rear door. And then it looks like you know we mentioned this in the other hundred series video the the mesh or the fabric that covers the speaker grill that's that's long gone. Let me see if it's on the front. Yeah, it's they pulled it off on all the doors. Good thing like Toyota did this. I mean, it looks pretty good even without it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, whatever. Oh, that seatbelt seems really nasty. seeing this much like wear in in kind of like you know maybe it's sun damage on a second row is a little unusual might have been you know parked with the side in the sun um i would expect maybe to see you know like some sun damage on you know like the seatbelt receptacle but that's quite a bit further inboard um or maybe even you know like some sun damage up here on the on the shoulder of the passenger seat but not seeing it um the bracket, the underlying bracket in the seats, rust colored, so it might have had a yeah, spill there at some point. Definitely shouldn't be rusty like that. But looks like it was yeah, pretty well used. Uh, there's the there's the third row, missing the headrests. Wonder where those are. They may not be included. Yeah, the edge of the seats just really worn. It could also just have had you know somebody in and out of it. You know, almost as much as the driver, which is very possible. Second seat mesh as you would expect and yeah so i think that disc player in the console is is for the second row entertainment so i'm seeing a way to you know kind of plug into it and then yeah i see these video screens which yeah are, yeah not not factory for this age nothing to write home on the carpets looks like a vehicle with 200 and something thousand miles on it Uh, looks like on the tailgate here, it's got like an aftermarket, uh, you know, off-roading like storage thing. You know, you can throw yeah off-road-ish supplies or whatever in there. So that's kind of a nice touch. It looks like they've dynamated it. And yeah, maybe this is like a kit for the um, for the rooftop tent. Who knows?
All right. So here at the Engine Bay, I, I do see a timing belt sticker. Uh, given the mileage, you know, this thing should have been through at least like two or three timing belts by now. Uh, definitely check the records on that. It looks like an aftermarket radiator or at least a replacement one. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing too much to write home. Typical, you know, corrosion condition like on the oil uh, dipstick tube here. And yeah, on these, um, you know, these little isolators for the AC lines. It's about what you'd expect. All right, moving over to the battery. Um, yeah, typical corrosion on this on this bracket. Uh, looks like it's got. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I don't know exactly what what these are going to. I didn't see a like a brake trailer controller or something else. So I don't know what this this power's for. Uh, but it looks at least there's fuses near the near the high or near the positive side. So that's that's good. I think there's like an aftermarket, like, you know, horn or alarm system. I don't know if that's what's being powered either. All right. So here on the undercarriage, it looks like an aftermarket skid plate, at least for the, um, yeah, it's not going to be for the engine, but for the transmission, um, the transfer case would be under this one. Uh, we're looking for evidence of a diff drop. I'm, I'm not seeing it, but I'm also not totally familiar with what it looks like. I feel like there should be like an additional, you know, like puck here, but maybe that's what this is. Uh, another spot that you see it is on, uh, is on the front skid plate, but that's, you know, out of the, out of the frame. So I don't, I don't, I don't know for sure. And looks like some sort of treatment, you know, for corrosion has been done on the rear, rear differential. That's why it's so like crusty. Uh, so just be aware of that, you know, and then looking at the body, you know, looking for kind of rust and corrosion. I, I don't see any like on these seams where it sometimes crops up. So that's, that's a good sign there. And, you know, another good indicator is the uh, spare tire carrier. That doesn't look like it's in bad shape either. This is where that wiring appears to be going. Looks like some of it, well, that's probably the factory wiring, but this other wiring, like this should be loomed. You know, it needs to be protected. That's you know, kind of, kind of crappy install something to fix. We, we talked earlier about, you know, the magnitude of the lift. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, you know, like a diff drop bracket or not a diff drop, a pan hair, pan hard brackets, not necessary. It's, I don't, I'm not seeing one here. Um, and I don't even know if I see, yeah, come going back to the diff drop. I don't think that's it. <laughs> yeah. A little, little out of my element there. I, I never lifted my Land Cruiser high in my hundred series high enough to require that. Um, and you could kind of get a sense, you know, on these CV joint angles, I mean, that, that doesn't look great. So my guess is that, yeah, there is no diff drop here. Um, yep. Also remember you're steering on these hundred series steering racks. When you replace the tie rod ends, you've got, you know, depending on what you get, if it's the like the standard five, five, five stuff that you get from somebody like cruiser outfitters, yeah, you got to paint those things up, get that oil off them and get them painted. Uh, the CV boots look good. Uh, looks like a little leak from up here. Not sure what's covered this upper spindle uh, with grease. Whether it's the yeah the upper uh, the upper control arm uh, ball joint or not. But it does good. Good news is it looks like there are aftermarket um, control arms up top. Okay, here on the passenger side uh, front suspension uh, looks like maybe a little bit of a tear in the uh, CV axle boot. So something to keep an eye on. And yeah, similar, this, the, you know, the dust and the grime covering the top here, that looks about normal. Uh, seems like the other side was a little bit more excessive. And then, yeah, same thing. Good job on getting the new tie rod ends. And it's not a big deal. I guess maybe you don't even need to paint them, but it might make it a little bit of a pain to work. All right. So moving here to the midship, um, you know, and just looking at the corrosion situation. I mean, the, the frame looks pretty good. I'd assume it's been touched up. You know, it seems like it's been, uh, Maybe that's like residue of uh, POR 15, you know, a, like a rust converter. That's probably what's what's happened here and why that, you know, rear diff looks, you know, different. It's had, you know, it's had something kind of slathered all over it. Um, same thing with the, you know, this gas tank skid plate. Um, anyway, the, the corrosion situation appears better than what I expect. But yeah, if you're looking for a rust free one, I'd, I'd look elsewhere. Uh, timing belt looks like it was just done a couple months ago. And yeah, handful of maintenance records. 
Cruiser Outfitters 2023 is going to be sweet. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if we can see if it's had a, yeah, so it looks like it does, at least by the sales order, it does have a diff drop kit. So don't, <laughs> I didn't install one, so yeah, I don't quite know what to look for, but yeah, it looks like at least it was ordered. Uh, and looks like I didn't notice this, but yeah, it looks like it does have an adjustable pan hard bar. So while that isn't the same as having, you know, a relocated pan hard bar bracket, uh, which I don't know if anybody's actually making them for the hundred. I know they make them for the, uh, for the 80, but, um, you know, that can, that can help with suspension stuff. So at least the suspension stuff, you know, at least when it was bought back in 2019 was, um, yeah, it seemed like they went, went all out for that. All right. Going through the rest of these receipts, seeing if anything jumps out at me. This is the receipt from the recent uh, timing belt. <laughs> Extra labor to remove broken bolt. Yeah, that's what you can expect if you have to work on this thing. All right, so here we are back at the beginning. Um, I don't know, so it's got six days left. It's at 5,300. I don't, I don't see this going for any more than 18,000. I that It's got you know all the cool aftermarket stuff that, that people want. Um, it's not a pristine showpiece. So, you know, that's got got that going for it. Um, this is a no reserve listing, so it'll sell. Uh, just the question is at what level? Um, let me make one thing clear. If this person bought it in January of 2022 and they didn't get some sort of abnormally like screaming deal, um, they probably paid again, it's got 243,000 miles, but it's got, you know, all of the subjectively cool, uh, you know, farkles and shiny bits that you would need for, you know, overlanding and off-roading. So back in January of 2022, I, I think the seller probably paid no less than, I don't know, 17, 18, 19, 20,000. So to make this explicitly clear, I don't think that they're coming out on top here, especially after you consider, you know, taxes and stuff like that. So I think this thing tops out at... Oh, 15,750 bucks. That's my guess. What do you think? Think it'll go for more? Or do you think it'll go for less? I mean, it's it's like well used. And you know, there's definitely still less desirability for these hundreds, you know, compared to 80s and, you know, the other variants. So, I yeah, I don't think it's going any going for anything more than 15,750. But if you feel otherwise, yeah, let me know. I'd be interested to hear your opinion. See if there's anything I missed. Yeah, so drop a drop a comment and yeah, let me know. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. See ya.